Hey mamas, if this is your first time with me watching these videos, um, I gave birth to my daughter about seven weeks ago and so in this video I am going to share a little bit um, about that experience and also how I achieved an all natural unmedicated birth. So my daughter was born August 26th in the morning and that day before, so August 25th, I was having contractions but I was 38 weeks and so I really wasn't thinking I was going into labor. I thought they were just more intense Braxton Hicks um, and so I really tried to not think about it um, but I was like, my body feels different, um, these Braxton Hicks feel different but it's probably nothing so I don't want to get my hopes up. Um, but as the day went on, the contractions just started getting um, closer together and more intense. And so by like 8 p.m. on August 25th, I was having contractions like three minutes apart, but they were like really, really small. And so I was like, oh, that's weird that they're happening like so close together, um, but like they're not that painful. Um, and so I, again, I just try to like push it out of my mind. But at that point I was like, I better tell my doula just in case like tonight's the night, like I don't know what's going on. So I texted her, let her know. Um, and then we went into the hospital later that night about 1 p.m. cause I was like, these contractions are really bad and they're close to get, they're not really bad, but like pretty intense and they're really close together. And I was like, I'm early, I'm a little bit nervous about my baby. Um, so we went in just to make sure that she was okay and the nurse told me I was only one centimeter dilated. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, like this is going to be such a long night, like if we are going into labor. Um, but we ended up going home and then I labored there for a while longer came home at or came back to the hospital at 3 a.m. and then I just yeah started laboring at the hospital and then um, ended up giving birth at 9 15 the next morning so um, that is the really brief and fast version of my labor and delivery um, and so as I'm talking to you guys about um, how I achieved a unmedicated and an all-natural uh, delivery, I'll talk more about my labor. So the first step that I took to get myself closer to achieving that all-natural unmedicated birth was figuring out the reason why I wanted to do it. And it looks different for every person. So for me, it was that I've had generations of mothers who have already done it. Um, and so I felt like I could do it. I knew my mom did it. I knew her mom did it. Her mom gave birth naturally. And so it wasn't something that I felt like I couldn't do because I knew that generations before me have already been there and had already done that. Um, but like I said, it looks different for everyone. What I think I would caution women who are wanting to achieve a natural birth is if it's like oh I have a friend who did it and so you know I want to do it because they did it or you know it's it's like you want to try to prove something to yourself or to someone else um, because when it comes down to the wire and you're like really in the midst of a really really hard labor um, that's probably not going to be a reason that's going to motivate you. Um, but I think a really good motivator and also another one that I used was that our bodies were made to do this. And so that was a big reason for me is that um, I believe it to be in most cases the safest and best way to bring our babies into the world um, because that's how our bodies were made to do it. So those were big reasons for me um, in wanting to achieve that natural and unmedicated birth. The second thing that I did was to learn about my body and just the anatomy of it and specifically of my uterus and my placenta which are both super cool. The uterus is, you know, making this super safe space for your baby and your placenta is nourishing your baby. Um, and then of course my vagina because that's, you know, the biggest part kind of which was most nerve wracking to me and probably most women because you're thinking of pushing a baby out of it. So although I had some fear and many women have some fear about, you know, pushing a baby through your vagina. Um, the more I learned about what it can do and the way it is meant to stretch um, made me a lot more confident knowing like, okay, my body was 
literally and specifically made so that this could happen. And so I don't need to be afraid like, oh, does my body know what to do? It does know what to do and it's gonna do it. In one of Ina May's books, um, The Guide to Childbirth, she mentions how it was so frustrating for her to hear someone say that like pushing a baby out of your vagina is like pushing like an orange out of your nostril or something um, and how that's not at all what it is. Like our nose was not meant to push anything out of it, um, but our vagina was specifically made to do that, to push a baby out. Um, and so after just learning more about my body and what it could do, I was able to be a lot more confident knowing that my body was going to be able to do what it was meant to do. So along with learning about what my body could do, it was important for me to learn about what my mind could do um, in me wanting to achieve an unmedicated and natural birth. Um, so when it came down to it, I felt like my labor and delivery was more of a mind game than it was a body game. Like my body was going to do what it was going to do, whether or not I wanted it to. Um, because <laughs> if you haven't already had a baby, um, you will learn that your body just does what it's gonna do. And if you've already had a baby, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you don't really have control over the contractions. You don't have uh, control about what the baby's doing. Um, they have their own kind of way of doing things. But what we do have control over is helping our body do those things easily or more easily with the control and power of our mind. Um, and so I noticed that the more at peace I was and the more calm my mind was, the more um, calm and more peaceful my body was, which really allowed the contraction to do what it was meant to do. But when our mind is tense, that usually works its way through our body to make the muscles in our body more tense, um, which is the opposite of what you want to do during a labor um, and delivery because the more tense you are, the harder it is for your uterus and your vagina and all the moving parts to do what they're supposed to do and relaxing to allow that baby through. While I was pregnant, um, I taught myself hypnobirthing. Um, so I just watched a lot of videos. A really good resource that I used was the Positive Birth Company and you can look them up on YouTube and I'll link them down below. Um, but they're super awesome at just explaining what hypnobirthing is, how our body works, and how to breathe correctly. Um, but And they also offer a course that you can take, um, which is a really good price, and it's just uh, one that you can do online. It's super awesome. Um, I recommended it to a few of my friends, um, and now I'm recommending it to all of you. Um, but I didn't actually use hypnobirthing while I was in labor and delivery. I think I was just so focused, and I really... Um, went inside myself that I didn't want like music. I didn't want like anything in my ears. Um, I had like prepared a labor playlist and I didn't even end up using it. Um, but anyways, so I, but I did practice hypnobirthing while I was pregnant and just the affirmations and the meditations that they use of, you know, saying like, your body was meant to do this. I will breathe through this contraction. I will allow this contraction to work through me. Those like really helped me during labor because I went back to that even though I wasn't listening to it in the moment I went back to what I learned before and was able to um, like meditate almost through contractions so the next thing that I did was to learn about kind of the process of labor and a little bit of the lingo that doctors and nurses were going to be using um, while I was in labor um, because I feel like a lot of times they'll say things and we don't necessarily know what they mean or um, they'll be saying like, you know, you're this much dilated and, and you're wondering, okay, well, where does that put me in like a timeline of my labor? Um, and so that was really encouraging to me. Like, um, I didn't get checked from the time that I went in until I was seven centimeters dilated because I just didn't want to get checked. It was too uncomfortable. So I knew from like one to five centimeters dilated, um, it's still fairly early in your labor. And then five to seven is like the make or break it point for moms usually where, and that's usually where they get an epidural if um, they do get it um, because it's just like things are really picking up. It's getting really intense. Um, and so it's like either the mom like changes her mindset and she's like, I'm going to power through this. Like we're going to get this done. Or it's like, I, I'm exhausted. I've been doing this for so long and there's no shame in that. And, and they get the epidural. Um, and then from seven on to 10, 
and where you'll where you're able to push that can usually go really fast and it's the five to seven where like you want to get through that because once you're through that it's like it's like the thick of it and you're once you get to seven it's like the end is in sight and so my midwife came in and she was like you're seven centimeters dilated and I was like okay because at that point I was I was so exhausted and I told my dude I was like maybe I'm gonna need an epidural um but after hearing that I was like okay I know where I am in my labor and I think that um despite being as tired as I am and you know as fatigued I think I'm going to be able to like push through it and actually like achieve this all natural birth the last thing that I did that um, really helped me achieve an all-natural birth was just having people around me in the room who were going to encourage me um, and advocate for me. So I had my husband James, I had my sister-in-law with me, so people I knew well, people who you know knew ways that I could be encouraged through it, um, and then I had my doula, and she um, was there to advocate for me and you know be the buffer between the nurses and me and you know the doctors and my husband you know so it was just super awesome having her and just having that team around me um, who reminded me I can do this I can do this um, but if I came to a point where I was like guys I really can't do this they're gonna say all right we are gonna do whatever it takes for you to be most comfortable in order to get this baby out and so I really felt like they had my back they knew what I wanted but they were also there to make sure I was safe um, and that we are gonna end up having a healthy baby. So what helped me achieve a natural and unmedicated birth was finding a reason that was gonna stick with me about why I really wanted to have this natural and unmedicated birth. And like I said, for every person it looks different. Um, and the second thing was to learn about my body and all the amazing things um, that it can do in order for me to have a baby. Um, the third thing is the power of my mind over my body and how it was going to help or hurt me, um, depending on how calm my mind is, was going to um, help my body be calm as well. The fourth thing is learning about the process of labor so that when you're in it and the doctor's telling you about where you're at, um, that you're able to translate that into your own labor and to, to help you determine where you're at. Um, and the last thing is to have people in the room who are there to encourage you and advocate for you. Um, so I hope these things are going to help you as you are trying to achieve a natural and unmedicated birth for yourself. So as always, if you have any other tips that I didn't share, we would love to hear what they are. So comment them below on how you achieved a natural or unmedicated birth. And if you have any questions about um, how to achieve this, please ask in the comments below. We would love to be able to answer them uh, myself or someone else. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.